Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we are going to be discussing why exactly Ninjago is not a perfect series, especially when it comes to animation and audio errors. I've already done a couple of videos on this subject before, but Ninjago as a series is riddled with animation mistakes and just random errors that pop up in the background that are distracting for some or amusing to others. I have a bunch more random Ninjago errors lined up for you guys today, and even a couple of audio mistakes as well. Mostly characters speaking with the wrong voices. There's a ton of that in Ninjago, especially during the earlier episodes. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. We're just going to be going through a couple of Ninjago mistakes in today's upload. And also for a side note, it is storming pretty bad right now as of the time of recording this video. So if you hear any rumbles in the background, that's probably what it is. So without further ado, why don't we jump on into these embarrassing Ninjago mistakes. So here we have an image of the ninja during the pilot episodes. The big mistake right here is that Jay is wearing the wrong costume. As you can see, he's in his DX robes, which is pretty much impossible for him to have at the time, considering the ninja did not have their dragons just yet as of this point in the story. So this is obviously a very clear animation mistake. Next up, we have a recent scene from Ninjago Core, a recent Ninjago mistake. This is an image of Jay riding his dragon, and as you can see right here, he's missing his island shoulder pad that he should have in this scene. Not really sure why it was not included. Again, just an animation error right there. But the island suit doesn't look too bad without the shoulder armor, though I do actually prefer the armor on on these suits, so yeah, big animation error right there, and a recent one at that too, showing that Ninjago still can make these mistakes in the modern day. So now moving on to audio mistakes, the first one that we have actually comes from Pirates vs Ninja, and as I'm sure you know, during this initial sequence where the ninja first meet Dareth, there's a lot wrong here, and I'm just not referring to the character of Dareth himself, not only the character of Dareth, uh, also Jay here in this sequence speaks with the wrong voice. Those that have seen this episode when it came out would remember discussing this a lot, I know I certainly did with my friends here why don't you take a listen look pal we're the guys that just saved the city from that giant snake Here's another animation mistake from a Ninjago short. This one comes from the Ninjago legacy short known as Elemental Rider. As you can see, what's going on over here with Kai's hand and the Sword of Fire? For some reason, the Sword of Fire hilt is white here and Kai's hand is clearly not holding it. What exactly is going on there? I'm not really sure what exactly caused this mistake, but it does look pretty weird out of context, that's for sure. Next up, we have the sequence in which Lloyd and the rest of the ninja are in the Temple of Light. Again, apologies for the way that this is cropped right here, just trying to avoid the Lego copyright police. But anyway, during this initial sequence, you might remember this to be a pretty magical moment until Zane over here speaks with Cole's voice. Not really his own voice, but Cole's. Not sure why that's a common theme, the ninja speaking with Cole's voice, but don't worry, we have a few more of those on the list as well to talk about. But yeah, it's kind of distracting during this scene. It's supposed to be a magical and majestic moment until Zane spouts out the line, no one move in Cole's voice. Here, take a listen. Some people might not consider this to be a mistake, but I definitely do. As you can see in this scene right here, Zane is being choked out by Scalador and Cole is being choked as well. It makes sense that Cole is being choked because as a human being, he needs oxygen to actually breathe, live, and function. Meanwhile, Zane over here is a nindroid. Why exactly is he acting like he can't breathe if he doesn't need oxygen as stated time and time again? Some folks may not consider this to be such a huge Ninjago mistake because at this point in the story, Zane had not yet been revealed to be a nindroid, so this might have given it away if Zane was totally fine here, but still kind of a weird thing when you're looking back on these early Ninjago episodes. Here we have the infamous scene in which Jay and Nia are on the roller coaster during episode 8 of Ninjago and Jay unlocks his true potential. Now at first glance there may not appear to be anything necessarily wrong with this image right here, but during this entire scene Nia is in her original outfit. While in the context of this episode she should have been wearing her dress or whatever she wore during that date with Jay, of course she put on her Samurai X gear in between those moments, but still take Taking off the Samurai X gear, Nia should be in her actual date dress. Why is she in her original outfit here? Unless she wore this under the dress and then wore the dress under the Samurai X suit. I don't know, just seems a little bit overly complicated to me. Here we have a random moment from the latter half of season two. And as you can see, Masako's glasses are kind of looking a little bit funky there. Not really sure what's going on with that, but it is kind of distracting once you're actually looking at it. Those don't look normal to me. Here we have a sequence from the ending of season three in which Wu and Garmadon open the doors of the Temple of Fortitude for 
the ninja. And as you can see, Garmadon is wearing gray pants. Not really sure what that's about. The minifigure should indeed have black pants, not gray. This looks very ugly. I prefer the black and gray look, not just gray all over the place. Kind of distracting right there. So here we have a pretty unique and funny Ninjago mistake. Not so much in terms of animation, but just in terms of the cast list. So this is the actual listing for wrong place, wrong time. This is the actual credits that show up at the very end of the episode. And as you can see, we have some peculiar things going on in the credits. First of all, Andrew Francis is there, who would not be making his Ninjago debut until season four, I believe, when he started voicing the character of Shade. And he's credited as Lloyd Older, which is incorrect because in wrong place, wrong time, Lloyd was still voiced by Jillian Michaels. It doesn't matter if he was younger or older, still the same voice actor. So why exactly Andrew Francis is cast as Lloyd Older? Not really sure what that's about. Kind of a little bit of an awkward inclusion there. Again, not really sure what Andrew Francis is doing in the credits, but hey, whatever works, I suppose. I suppose in this alternate universe, he was cast as Lloyd Older. Here we have another example of a ninja speaking with Cole's voice. This time it's Kai in episode 10 of Ninjago, the green ninja. During the sequence where he rescues poor little Lloyd from getting, you know, burnt up and killed, he actually utilizes spin jitsu. And of course, when the ninja use spin jitsu, they shout ninja go. Only Kai does it in Cole's voice. Again, for some reason, this is another example of a ninja speaking with Cole's voice for some reason. Take a listen to this scene. Now this sequence right here is pretty confusing. This comes from episode 12 of Ninjago, Rise of the Great Devourer. And there's a sequence in which Master Wu actually uh, ejects the ninja from the train car because his destiny is to face Pyther alone. We know all of that. The way that he actually breaks down and I guess separates the ninja from himself is using his staff, as you can see here. Unfortunately, a few seconds prior when they actually rescue Master Wu, as you can see, his staff is nowhere to be found. Where exactly does his staff come from? Who knows? Maybe he has it strapped to his back, as you can can see like Cole has with his side of quakes back here but I don't know you'd think that we'd be able to see the staff right poking out because it's a pretty big weapon but no Master Wu just does not have it in this sequence which makes it all the more awkward when he uses his staff to actually separate the ninja from himself not really sure what the thought process was behind that debacle this sequence right here comes from one of my favorite Ninjago episodes when I was younger child's play and this is the sequence where Lloyd grows older and as you can see coming out of the rubble he does not have ZX shoulder pads much like the other ninja do here he does not have them. Now, obviously, as the scene goes on, he still continues to not have them, still continues to not have them. Then it randomly cuts to this shot, and he has them. Fantastic. That's the, that's the look that I prefer. Lloyd with shoulder pads. It makes him look more complete, more adult, more elegant. But then in the very next sequence that we see Lloyd in the very next shot, he magically does not have the shoulder pads anymore. What exactly is the deal with that? Who knows? But this is one that always bothered me when I was a kid. I could always notice that every single time I watched this episode. I thought this was a very magical moment that was compromised by a simple animation mistake. Again, kind of obnoxious, but whatever, it's all right. So with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Obviously, with all of the mistakes that Ninjago has throughout its series of animation and even some of its audio, some people would consider Ninjago a pretty faulty show, but to be honest, despite all of its errors, Ninjago still stands as being one of my personal favorite TV shows, and for me, it's easy to overlook some of these mistakes, as distracting as some of them might be. And that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment down below discussing which animation mistake or audio mistake you thought was the funniest one. And also, did you notice any of these beforehand? Thank you all so much for watching today's video, everybody. If you enjoyed today's upload, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And as always, check out the links down below in the description for my other forms of social media. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Once again, you guys, my name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell.